In this video, we will talk about how SOFR futures work and how they can be put to use in a simple practical situation. Quick recap, SOFR, it stands for the Secured Overnight Financing Rate. It's a benchmark rate which is meant to replace USD LIBOR. Intuitively, SOFR is the interest cost on an overnight borrowing that is collateralized by US Treasuries. SOFR futures, these are essentially futures contracts which reference SOFR and these contracts, they trade on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, CME. Okay, now to understand SOFR futures, let's take a look at a very simple example. Let's say I am standing as of this point in time. Okay, this is someday in the current month of February 22. And let's say I am looking at a hundred million dollar borrowing for a period that does not start right away. It's a period that starts sometime in the future. Specifically, this period starts on 21st September 22. That's the third Wednesday of September 22. And it finishes three months hence on 21st December 22. That's the third Wednesday of December 22. Okay. Now, for this borrowing, the interest cost, let's say, will be calculated using the three-month implied SOFR rate for this period plus a 200 basis points fixed spread. Okay. Now, when I described the SOFR to you, I described it as an overnight rate. But the rate that we are referring to here is a three-month implied SOFR. Okay, the three month SOFR is calculated from the SOFRs which are observed on each business day during this period by compounding all of these daily or let's say overnight SOFRs during this period. Okay, so we'll be observing the SOFRs on all business days starting from 21st September 22 all the way till 20th December 22. That's one business day before the last day of this period, which is 21st December 22. Okay. Once we have the SOFRs for all these business days, we will stitch them together. We will compound all of them to arrive at the three month implied SOFR for this entire period. Okay. Now, if this is my situation, then the risk that I am facing is that as I keep moving forward in time, there may be this adverse scenario wherein the interest rates might go up. If interest rates go up, I am in a loss because my interest cost will go up. Okay. Therefore, for this situation of mine, I am looking for a hedge that gives me an offsetting gain if interest rates were to indeed go up. And let's say I have chosen to work with SOFR futures as my hedging instrument. Okay. If I were to go to CME, okay, then what I'll observe is that there are actually two types of SOFR futures that trade on this exchange. These are number one, one month SOFR futures, also referred to as SR1, and number two, three month SOFR futures also referred to as SR3. The design of one month SOFR futures is such that these futures are structurally as similar as possible to the federal funds futures contract. The design of three month SOFR futures is such that this contract is structurally as similar as possible to the euro dollar futures contract okay for this situation wherein i have a three month interest rate period i'll choose to work with three month sofr futures and specifically as my choice of hedging instrument i'll be entering into a position on september 22 three month sofr futures okay so september 22 will be my contract month December 22 will be what is referred to as the contract delivery month. And this 
three month period will be what is referred to as the reference quarter. Now let's do this. Let's very quickly take a look at the contract specifications for three month SOFR futures. The first thing for us to note is that the notional amount for three month SOFR futures is $1 million. Then on any given day, the price or let's call it the level of three month SOFR futures is quoted as 100 minus the implied three month SOFR for the chosen reference quarter. Let's denote this rate as capital R. Note this that this rate is expressed in percentage points. Okay, this way of quoting the level of my SOFR futures is also referred to as the IMM index. IMM stands for International Monetary Market. Okay, now if this R, this implied three month SOFR for my reference quarter were to change by one basis point, that means by 0 0.01, then the gain slash loss for one three month SOFR futures works out to $25. It's very simple actually to rationalize this number. 0 0.01 change in R, which I know is in percentage points, that divided by 100 to take into account the fact that R is in percentage points. That times 1 million, that times 0.25, which is length or duration of this period expressed in years. That will give you $25. Okay. What you can also do is that based on the IMM index on any given day, you can calculate what is called the contract unit for any given three month SOFR futures contract. The formula is simple. It's 2500 that times the IMM index on any given day. I can interpret the contract unit to be the dollar value of one futures contract. Okay. Now, when it comes to contract months, please note this, that for three months so for futures, the cycle that's followed is March, June, September and December. At any given point in time, you will have available as your choice for the contract month will be the next or upcoming 39 consecutive quarters. Okay. Now, at this stage, let's very quickly try and figure out what all are the similarities as well as differences between three month SOFR futures and Euro dollar futures contract. Well, the similarities are that for both of these contract types, number one, the notional amount is the same, that's $1 million. Number two, the way the style of quoting the level, I mean the price is also the same, it's 100 minus the appropriate or chosen rate of interest. It's LIBOR for Euro dollar futures contract and it's the three month implied SOFR for the three month SOFR futures. Then the $25 gain slash loss from one basis point move in your chosen rate is also the same for both of these contracts. Okay. Now when we come to the differences between these contracts, if let's say this contract that we've chosen as our hedging instrument, if instead let's say it was the September 22 Euro dollar futures contract, then please note this that the fixing for this period, I mean the fixing for LIBOR would have happened two business days before the third Wednesday of September 22. The third Wednesday, it falls on 21st September 22. So the LIBOR fixing would have happened on the 19th of September 22. So 19th of September would have been the last trading day for this contract and the final settlement would have happened at the beginning of this interest period. Okay. If I were to now come to three months so for futures, please note this that the trading of these futures goes well beyond the contract month. Okay, for this example, the trading of the September 22 three months so for futures will go all the way till 20th December 22. That's one business day prior to the third Wednesday of the contract delivery month. Okay, it's only on this day, 20th September 22, 
that we will have the final settlement price for this contract. That final settlement price will be used to work out the last settlement between the long and the short party. And the settlement, therefore, for three months so far futures does not happen at the beginning of the period, as we had in the case of LIBOR, but instead it happens at the end of the period. Okay? Now come back to our simple example that we were talking about. So I have to, at this point in time, enter into an appropriate hedge using the three-month SOFR futures contract with contract month as September 22. Let's say if I were to go to the market, then as of today, this futures contract is trading at this level, 98.495. I know that I should interpret this quote to be 100 minus the three-month implied SOFR for this reference quarter, which means that based on this quote, the market is telling me that as of today, the three-month SOFR for this period is 100 minus 98.495 and that comes to 1.505%. Okay? Now, for this hedging instrument, which is available at this price, what should my exact position be? Should it be long or should it be short? And how many contracts will I require? Now, I need a hedge which gives me a gain if interest rates go up. If interest rates go up, it means that this R will go up. If R goes up, the price, the level of my three-month SOFR futures will come down. I'm looking for a hedge that gives me a gain if the level of my futures comes down, which means that I should be entering into a short position in the September 22, three-month SOFR futures. Also, the amount of my borrowing, the size of my borrowing is $100 million, and the notional amount for one contract is $1 million. This tells me that the number of contracts that I need is actually 100 contracts. So, precisely, my hedge position works out to be this. My position is a short position in September 22, three months so for futures, and the number of contracts required is 100 contracts. Okay? Now, if you've observed this carefully enough, this example that we've constructed for ourselves is such that the borrowing period for my 100 million borrowing exactly coincides actually with the period underlying or underpinning the September 22 three-month SOFR futures contract. Both for my loan and for my hedge, it's the same interest period that we are referring to. The period which starts on the third Wednesday of September 22 and finishes on the third Wednesday of December 22. Okay? Now, this is important because we want the three-month implied SOFR for our loan to exactly match the three-month implied SOFR, which our hedge, in this case, three-month SOFR futures, ends up calculating on 20th December 22. Okay, the one business day prior to the third Wednesday of the contract delivery month. Okay, so if I were to position myself at this point in time, which is 20th December 22, and let's say the final settlement price for my September 22 SOFR futures comes to 98.2. This is telling me that the three-month implied SOFR for this period has eventually now been calculated as 100 minus 98.2, and that's 1.8%. If that is the case, then the interest that I'll be paying on my loan, on my borrowing, will be 100 million, that times 1.8%, plus the 2% fixed spread, that times 0.25. This comes to 950k. Okay? Simultaneously, at this point in time, I will have the gain slash loss coming from my SOFR futures hedge. To calculate this gain slash loss, remember that for every 0 0.01 move in R, there is a gain slash loss of $25. That means for every one unit move in R, the gain slash loss will be 25 times 100. That's 2500. Okay? Now, 
for this hedge position, I have a short position in 100 contracts. So my gain slash loss will be number of contracts, that's 100. That times the initial level at which I entered, that was 98.495 minus the current level, which is 98.2, that times 2500, right? The gain slash loss for every per unit move in R. This tells me that my gain slash loss will work out to 73,750, which means that my net interest cost, which is this interest cost minus this gain works out to 876,250. Okay, this is my net interest cost after taking the gain slash loss from my hedge. Now, you can actually very quickly convince yourself that this net interest cost is also equal to 100 million that times the three month implied SOFR calculated on the basis of the initial price, the initial level of this futures contract at which I entered, and that works to 1.505% plus 2% fixed spread, that times 0.25. Okay, so 100 times. 1.505 plus 2, that's 3.505 percent, that times 0.25. This is telling me that by entering into this three-month SOFR futures based hedge, as of today, I was able to lock in a value of this three-month implied SOFR for this period at this level, 100 minus 98.495, that's 1.505 percent. You can actually further convince yourself that you've indeed locked in this value of three months so far at 1.505 by redoing all these calculations for the second case wherein the final settlement price of this futures contract on 20th December 22 comes out to instead of 98.2 it comes out to 98.7. If you were to redo all these calculations, you will again find that your net interest cost comes to 876,250, which proves this point that you have indeed locked in a value of three months so far at this level 1.505. Okay? This video was all about understanding how so far futures work and how, in a very simple practical situation, you can make use of three month so far futures as your hedging instrument.